One of the features missing from Azure SQL Database is the ability to create linked servers. However, there is something similar called Azure SQL Database Elastic Query. This allows you to run queries against another Azure SQL Database or Data Warehouse, but it does not support connections to other types of data source such as Oracle, Access, Excel or SQL running on an Azure virtual machine. The name is a bit confusing. You, like me, might think that you require an elastic pool to be able to run an elastic query. And I may have implied that in my video on elastic databases. But it turns out this is not the case. You can run elastic queries from any Azure SQL database to any other Azure SQL database. The example I'm going to demonstrate today is what is known as vertical partitioning. In other words, I am simply connecting one Azure database to another completely unrelated Azure SQL database. The opposite of this is horizontal partitioning or sharding, where a large table is split up over several different Azure databases, each holding a set of rows, which are distributed between the different databases based on a key. So it is a similar idea to partitioning in a traditional SQL database, but sharding is for another day. Today we will be looking at vertical partitioning. So let me go over to Management Studio and we can start taking a look. Here I am in SQL Server Management Studio and I've connected to my Azure server called Clooney Elastic Server and I have a whole series of databases in here but the ones that we're going to be using today are the Elastic Master DB and the Elastic DB1 and DB2. So if we look at my Elastic Master DB you'll see that I currently have no tables assigned to here but we do have a new option called external tables and we'll be putting some entries into that very shortly and once we've created some external tables we'll be able to query those external tables and they will pull data back from Elastic DB1 and Elastic DB2. Coming over to my query window first of all I've created a login to use for this called Elastic User and I've created a user for that login on the Elastic DB1 database and also on my central Elastic Master database. first thing I'm going to do is create a master key and also a database scoped credential which will hold our login name and password and I'll create these on our central Elastic Master database. Then we need to create an external data source. In this case I'm creating a data source called Elastic DB Customer. It is of a type called RDBMS which is what is supported on Azure SQL Server, there is another type called Hadoop which can be used to connect and run Polybase. Now the location is my Azure SQL Server called Clooney Elastic Server and the database name is ElasticDB1 and we're going to use the credential that we created earlier for the login name and password. Now very strangely we have a trailing comma at the end of this line and that is required if you remove that comma this command doesn't work. So if we run and create our external data source, the next thing is we need to create our external table. So our external table is going to be an exact copy of the table that we are going to query against. So if I open up ElasticDB1 and look at the tables, you'll see that these are all the tables from the AdventureWorks LT sample database. And I'm going to query this salesLT.customer table. So my external table has to have exactly the same configuration as the table I'm going to query but we simply add with data source equals in this case elastic DB customer to the end. Now because this external table is in sales LT schema I will need to create that sales LT schema in my elastic master database. So if I run that first I can now create my external table. And that has worked quite happily. Now if I come down to my Elastic Master database and refresh my external table list you'll see that we now have the salesLT.customer table listed. If we try and open it up there's no options underneath it. Compare that to a standard table. If I open up my salesLT customer table 
you'll see that it has all the options for columns, keys, constraints, etc. But for an external table, none of that exists. So now I've created my external table, I can simply run a query against it. So here I'm just going to select all the rows from salesLT.customer, and that will simply call that external table, which will then call the, the real table in ElasticDB1 and return all the rows. And it's as simple as that. Let's go a bit further on and I'm going to do the same thing again, but this time I'm going to join it to a second database. So this time I'm using my ElasticDB2 database. I've created a user in that database, which is linked to the Elastic user login. I'm now going to create a new external data source, this time called ElasticDB Sales, pointing to the Clooney Elastic Server and the database ElasticDB2 using the same credential as before. And if we run that, no surprise and it's successful. And now I can create my external table. But this time I'm doing something slightly different. The table that I'm going to be querying again is in the sales LT schema and is called sales order header. But I can give it a completely different name in my external table. So this time I'm going to create the external table in the DBO schema and I'm going to call it my sales order header. So it is possible to have a different name for your external table to the actual source table that you're going to query. And if I run that, we have no complaints. If I refresh my list, I now have two external tables. And again, I can run a query against dbo.mysalesorder, which returns rows, which is actually linked to the sales LT sales order header table in the Elastic DB2 database. And there's nothing to stop us running joined queries against both external tables. That is quite achievable and works quite happily. So you can start joining and querying tables from different databases with no issue whatsoever. A question that might come to mind is can you link an external table to a database in a completely different server. And yes, you can. We can do that. So I have another SQL Server down here called QEDZW0 something or other. And in there I have a database, the AdventureWorks 2012 database. I've created my user. I'm going to use the same user for this. Hopefully you wouldn't do that in a real production system. So I've created my Elastic user and the login in my QEDZ database. I'm now going to create that external data source to my Azure database. So again, we're calling this one ElasticDB2012. The location is that QEDZ server, and the database is AdventureWorks 2012, and we're using the credential that we created earlier. Now, in this case, we hit a couple of other interesting points that are worth noting about external tables. I'm going to create an external table to a table that exists in my AdventureWorks database called Person Temp, which I use for some of my other demos. Now, this Person Temp table has a number of user-defined data types. Here we have one called Name, Style, and Name. Before we can create our external table, we have to create those user-defined data types within our Elastic Master database. So I have the two lines up here to create them. And now that will allow me to create the external table. If you don't want to create your user defined data types, then if you know what the data type is, then you can simply change the data type to be the underlying data type. So in this case, the last name column should be using the name user defined data type. But since the name user defined data type is basically nchar for nvarchar 50, I can change it for that and that will work quite happily. But you must make sure that your data types match exactly even down to the number of characters otherwise a query will fail. There are some data types that aren't supported so the XML data type isn't supported so I've actually just taken those out of the definition for my external table. So if I now run that it will quite happily create that for me. And now I can run my query to talk to my table on a completely different Azure SQL Server. So there's no reason why you can't run cross-server queries 
using external table. But you cannot update an external table. If you run an update and insert or a delete, so here's an example, it will fail. It will come back and say DML operations are not supported with external tables. So these external tables are simply for running selects and pulling data back. If you don't want to create lots of external tables, then it is possible to query any table just by using the external data source. And we have a new store procedure called SP Execute Remote that allows us to do this. So in this case, I'm going to run SP Execute Remote using the external data source of ElasticDB 2012 and then run the command select top 100 from the human resources department table. And that works perfectly okay. You can pull data back in that way. We can run store procedures on our external data source as well. So in this case I'm going to run a store procedure called select top 50 persons and that will work without any trouble. So you can use the store procedure to pull your data back. You will see when we run this that we do get an extra column here called the dollar shard name and this shows you the server name and the database name that that row came from. These are more useful when you're doing horizontal partitioning and you might be pulling data from lots of different databases. If we are going to use this option, we have to make sure that our data that we are returning has data types that are supported. So if I try and just run a select star from my person temp table, then because it has these XML data types, we actually get an error because they cannot be pulled back through the external data source. If we scroll over here, you'll see the error message. Additional, con con additional contact info exception error because it's not supported. In that case, I need to make sure that when I run my query against my Elastic 2012 data source, that I only include, I only include columns which are valid for an external data table. But if I run this one, just returning the first name, the middle name, and the last name, then the data comes back without any issue. The SP Execute Remote will only support one external data source. If we go back to the query where we were querying two tables from different data sources, then unfortunately that currently isn't possible because you can only specify one data source. And so it fails trying to find the tables that it's looking for, unfortunately. And one final point before we finish, you do need to configure a security option on your Azure SQL Server to allow external tables and external data sources to work. So if I come over to the portal, here I am on my QEDZ server. If we click on the show firewall settings, you will have to enable allow access to Azure services. Otherwise, the two Azure servers that you wish to talk to will not be able to communicate. So you will need to turn that on and you would need to understand the security implications of turning that on as well. I hope this quick introduction has given you a good basis to understand elastic queries and external tables. These examples have shown vertical partitioning. We will be going to, on to look at horizontal partitioning and sharding in a later video. So I hope to see you then. I hope this video has been useful to you. You can view more of my videos on Azure and SQL databases on my YouTube channel. There is also a free ebook available on Microsoft Azure that you can download from getanalyst.com. So please leave a comment if you enjoyed this video or even if you didn't. And I'll look forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much for listening.